So thanks for your time. Thanks for allowing me to show our system, my baby. Um, small introduction. I've been working in healthcare informatics for the last 13 years, 14 years, something like that. Um, I'm a computer engineer. It's a mix of uh, software engineering and computer science in Uruguay. I'm from Uruguay. Um, and I started working in 2006 in OpenEHR uh, with the Java reference implementation. And in 2010, I think I started playing with the idea of creating a um, clinical data repository based on OpenEHR because we didn't have any open source implementation uh, at that time. And in 2011, I started with uh, actually providing OpenHR training online. And it was nice to talk about OpenHR and the theory, but we didn't have any tools to actually work with OpenHR, hands-on tools. So in 2013, I started working on a proof of concept that was the initial EHR server that actually worked. Uh, it was basically uploading OPTs, uh, storing some compositions, and yeah, doing some very basic querying uh, based on the paths. Um, and that evolved. Uh, I used that tool uh, for my courses, but evolved in an open source product right now. And uh, right now, this is provided online as a cloud service. So you buy a subscription, basically. And also uh, for specific clients, we do like uh, on-site installations. Yeah. Uh, so this is the EHR server is basically a clinical data repository with a user interface that actually allows you to manage the information in the clinical data repository. And I have here a small diagram somewhere here. So this is our, our, the basic uh, architect architectural components. Yeah, so it has um, the repository itself that allows you to store and manage EHRs, uh, compositions, to make contributions. I'm not sure if you all are familiar, not Eric, I'm not, not, I'm not asking Eric, but with the OpenHR terminology. Yes? Yeah, quite so. Good. So uh, basically, compositions are the clinical documents. Uh, contributions are when you send a, a bunch of documents to an EHR to be stored, basically. And also, we have uh, over that a uh, querying engine that is very different to the current implementations of OpenHR. Uh, basically, most implementations um, of the big companies implement some flavor of AQL. They, don't, they are not compatible right now. 100% compatible because the actually the AQL specification is not complete and I'm actually working on the AQL specification yeah, as part of the um, is the SEC is the specification editorial committee yeah so I'm part of I'm part of that and I'm actually fixing the AQL specification um, so our way of querying is a little different. So it's, it's not based on AQL, it's based on picking paths in archetypes and creating um, conditions over those paths. I will show you how that works later. And we have in the tool, since we have a web console that is the user interface of the EHR server that allows administrators to actually work with the EHR server uh, creating EHRs, managing users, um, uh, doing some audit um, work, uh, checking all the commits to each EHR, uh, checking the internal um, data in the clinical documents, etc. Yeah, and also creating queries. So the query builder is integrated in the tool. Um, we don't have a separate tool to create queries. So the actually the query builder and the query execution is done in the same uh, application. It's just one application. And then we have another component, this is a big component, is the REST API. The REST API, I'm actually in the process of uh, implementing the OpenHR API, uh, since this API is not the official OpenHR REST API. Yeah. 
but works in a very similar way and is based on canonical data formats. So it, it is not 100% um, compliant with the current API, but allows you to do almost the same work. Yeah. And we have a, a small integration with an external tool that is the SNOMED query uh, tool. Um, that is a tool created by a, a Spanish company, it's Veratech, that allows us to actually use SNOMED expressions in the queries. Yeah. SNOMED expressions are a way to express a set of SNOMED concepts in just one expression. So you can say, for example, I want to um, reference all the types of the, the diabetes. Yeah, and SNOMED has a, a very complex tree of all the diabetes types and subtypes. Yeah, and if you want to use that as a filter in a query, you can. Basically, you can say, I want the patients that have some diagnosis being any type of diabetes. And that is a, a set of SNOMED codes, maybe, I don't know, 100, something like that. Yeah, uh, so that is the basic architecture. Um, do you want me to... Uh, because for me, I tend to, I'm uh, used to uh, provide courses, so I am used to getting questions in between my presentation. So if you want to make any questions, any comments, whatever, just go ahead. Yeah. Uh, any, any, any questions about the architecture? Uh, not, not right now, but we'll try right. to uh, keep uh, our questions uh, pretty short or not so much during this first hour so that you get the full hour to actually explain what you have. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. But it is sometimes if I'm, is for context, if I'm talking about a specific thing and you have a specific questions about that, uh, yeah, that, sure. that thing, I can answer, you know, uh, okay. in real time. <laughs> So uh, this is the website of the uh, cloud solution that we provide actually. So you can see here, I will show you that in a second, is basically um, the web console is at for administration and we have as any cloud service, we have the like different plans that you can just uh, get and start working. The idea of the HR server in general is to have a microservice that com implements a lot of functionalities that you need to, to create any kind of um, electronic health record. Could be an application to uh, a data entry application, could be a data visualization and data, a data analysis uh, tool, yeah? And behind that, you have the HR server um, already compliant with OpenHR, basically. You say which uh, structures for the documents you will use, uh, providing the uh, OpenHR operational templates. The operational templates is basically a definition of a clinical document structure with some constraints. Um, and after that, you can actually start uh, sending data compliant with that uh, specific structure, and then you can query. Yeah. Um, so it's for, I would say, helps uh, fast prototyping tools, yeah, when you want to create a, a, an end user tool. Uh, it helps on that area because you don't have to worry about the data storage, really. And storing clinical information sometimes is complex, it's very complex. Um, I guess Eric knows about that <laughs> already. So um, yeah, this is provided as a microservice. So this is not, for example, a, a patient uh, identity um, uh, storage. You need another component to store the patient uh, uh, identity and demographic data, for example. Um, this is not a front-end tool. This is not for final users. It's for uh, um, to provide services to front-end tools that will be used by final users. Yeah, but uh, um, it provides a user interface for administration. Yeah, it is an open source uh, product, so it it can be downloaded. It can be built, it can be compiled, it can be run in any machine. Actually, it's all uh, Java technology. And behind, you can use any data database, relational database. We are currently using, most of the time, uh, MySQL is the, the 
the, the database that I use for testing and developing. So that is, um, we have a lot of tests on, on MySQL, but could you really use any relational database. For example, you can change that to Postgres or Oracle or whatever, because it, the HR server is based on a framework that is used to create web applications that is called Grails. Um, and Grails uses internally Hibernate, and Hibernate is uh, basically an object relational mapper uh, framework that could be, by configuration, you could change the, the, the actual database um, technology behind it with just configuration yeah, and some small tweaks, maybe. Um, but here we have um, the documentation about how to install the HR server on your machine, how to, we have a lot of tutorials and I, I make a lot of videos in Spanish and English. Uh, I don't have videos in Swedish yet, but who knows? Um, uh, so everything is online and the training materials are online. So this is pretty open and we have all the features here. We have documentation, simple steps of how to install the tool. So it's very straightforward. Yeah. So anyone can install the tool. Actually, I have a client in Mexico and they installed the, the HR server in, in a couple of hours, uh, one day, and they're using that preparing for production actually. And they have uh, around three, 300,000 patients right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, That's the so, largest yeah. installation you know of? Yeah, because the issue I have with uh, installations and knowing of the installations is this is an open source product. So anyone can download it and actually deploy it for millions of people. But I, I don't know. I, I can't keep track of, of the tool. But this is the issue I, I have with, you know, um, uh, that info getting that information or gathering that information uh, because no one is obliged actually to report to me what they are doing with the HR server. Yeah. Uh, so do you think you could send uh, the contacts uh, to that person running those 300,000? That would be interesting to have a chat with sometime maybe. Yeah, I, w I, I can ask uh, the company for more information. Yeah. Um, it is basically an, an e-health um, uh, telehealth tool is basically an application for the cell phone and they have uh, uh, telehealth consultations. Uh, mm -hmm. They started with uh, psychology consultations, but they want to expand that to uh, primary care and some specialists. Yes. To have everything that could be just a consultation that you don't need to actually, you know, touch the patient. Mm -hmm. Like dermatology, for example, you, you need to see the skin of the patient. So they I do, are doing that, that telehealth mainly. Um, yeah, let's go to the application. So the application is right now in English and Spanish. Uh, I have some translations to Portuguese, so it can be translated to any language, really. Um, we have uh, external uh, language files. And I have already, uh, this is um, an account with some EHR, some clinical documents already loaded. Yeah, I use this for demos, so fits this purpose. <laughs> so this, uh, the EHR server is multi-tenant. So you can have different hospitals in the system and you can store EHRs inside each hospital, inside each organization, and other hospitals don't have access to the EHRs of another hospital, yeah? So this is separated by organizations. Um, what I have right here are just, this is the dashboard. You can see just some, um, numbers like how, how many, how much, uh, for example, um, EHRs we have in the, in the server, uh, the commits that we have, how, how many queries do we have, the templates, users, etc. So we have some, uh, indicators here. We can add more indicators, uh, if you need to, yeah, this is very easy to do. And then we have the size of each repository for each of the organizations that we have in the system. Here I have test organizations, also some organizations that um, belong to people doing my courses because I, I have, for example, one course that is about uh, clinical data storage, design and implementation. And we use the HR server as, um, 
as a study case. Yeah, so we, we, they create accounts here and they try to actually use this to store and retrieve information. Yeah. Um, so just a quick overview of the user interface. Uh, we have a, a help here to get you started that is just saying what you need to do. One, two, three, four. This is very simple steps. Anyone can follow. Also, we have a tour here explaining the user interface and what you will find on each section. So this is just for the user and usability. This is for the administrative user. Um, since this is also designed for the cloud, it contains some plans. So this is the plan for the subscription and you have different levels of plans that you can use. Uh, for example, you can here establish a limit for the repository uh, size of each um, account or type of account. Yeah. Also, we have limits for uh, EHRs or API tokens, etc. for each account. Uh, we have something that these Currently under development, it works uh, pretty well. It's the um, synchronization uh, API. So what we do is you can deploy two servers and you can mirror those servers. You can use that for um, uh, high availability or you can use that as a backup server. So what we do, if you have two servers, in one server, you create a, a synchronization token, and in the other server, you configure that synchronization token. So in the server that you configure the synchronization token, every time an EHR is created, an OPT uh, operational template is uploaded, a uh, composition is committed to an EHR, that will send that information to the other server. Yeah, So that will synchronize automatically. Uh, this is just a test testing feature right now, but it works uh, pretty well. Um, then you can manage the organizations from here. Uh, you can create organizations. You can see the details. You can see um, information, for example, about the um, how many e EHRs are on that organization. Uh, if we have, for example, each organization could have many API tokens. When you create an API token, that is for example, to, to provide an access to a front-end application to this organization, EHR. Yeah? So you can just create an API token for external applications so external applications can, could interact with the REST API here. Yeah? And this is by organization because the scope of the EHRs, the EHRs belong to one organization. Yeah? Uh, let me check another organization that I have more data for example in this one here we have some indicators for example this indicate these boxes uh have indicators about the the usage uh of the repository by this organization for each month and you can navigate backwards and you can check for each month um what was the use in that month uh of the repository by that organization yeah um, also, also, you can see the EHRs that are um, inside this organization, yeah. Or you can see, for example, all the EHRs. If you go to health records, you can see all the EHRs in the system. These are just uh, UUIDs. These IDs don't have any sense in a in a human way. You don't, you can't identify a person by these UIDs. Yeah, this is just for internal reference. So if I open one uh, EHR, I can see the details inside that EHR. So I can see the ID of that EHR, the organization that that EHR belongs to. I can see the date that EHR was created and by which system what was created. And also I can see the different commits of data for that EHR in this timeline. Yeah, this is helpful for auditing. Actually, you, you need to know for this patient, if you got any documents for the last year or whatever, you can come here, you can filter by dates, and you can check for a specific, uh, if you find a specific document or not here. Yeah. And so th this timeline basically contains the, the date and time and also the identifiers for this specific commit at that time. And below are all the commits, in, uh, I, I would say, in an expanded way. You can see all the information for each uh, commit. 
The commit is just, I would say, a set of clinical documents that are sent to the EHR at once. Yeah? It could be thought as a clinical session, for example. You have a clinical session, a visit, and you create a couple of documents, for example, the document recording that session, and maybe a medication prescription, and also a laboratory order. So you have three documents in the same clinical session. So each commit can have more than one document. Here I have commits of just one document. So you can see here, for example, for all the purposes, the date that uh, this commit was created, uh, what is the name? Also, you can uh, get the ID of the committer and you can see the information about each document in the commit. Uh, so you can see the ID, uh, you can see the template. This is the operational template ID that this document complies with. And this is the uh, root uh, archetype ID of, for that document. So I, I see that this is for demographic data, for example. And also the, the OpenHR specification um, has a, a version control uh, package or specification and the HR server implements that. So you can actually uh, version different uh, documents in the EHR server. So for that, you need to actually create a document and then you can commit a modification for that document. A modification could occur, for example, if the first document has missing information or, or if, if the first document has information with errors. You can actually commit a new version of that document, fixing those errors or completing the missing information. Yeah, and that is supported by uh, OpenHR, of course, defined by OpenHR and supported by the HR server. Yeah, and here we have a view. Yeah. This is the contents of the document. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 you're just getting to that. What's the blue one beside the XML? I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm clicking on everything. So <laughs> this is the actual uh, commit. So this is um, this is a clinical document with versioning information. This is the clinical document, and here this is the version information. Sorry, and here starts the composition, and here we have all the information. And if you come here, you can see, for example, this is demographic data. And this is the minimal demographic data that we need to make uh, filters on clinical queries, really. So it's the date of birth and sex of the patient or gender. Yeah. Uh, so here we have the date of birth and here we have the gender as a code. Yeah, basically. And uh, has been upgraded. Okay. And this is the button that shows you, this is the XML document transformed uh, using a, a style sheet. Yeah, right. so you can see here basically this is the sex and date of birth. Sorry, this is doc this document is in Spanish. So it says uh, género instead of, of gender. Yeah, and fecha de nacimiento instead of date of birth. But this is the original uh, language in the document. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's see a more complicated or more complete, I don't know. Yeah, this is a more complete uh, document. This is a document that contains a diagnosis. So here uh, it says the, just the text of the coded diagnosis and some clinical description and the time of the finding and the severity of the, of the, you know, the health problem. Yeah, um, this of course could be improved in terms of format. This is just to overview that document and do some auditing. Uh, and you can see, of course, the canonical form of the OpenHR document. And this is actually compliant with the um, XML schemas. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, you can see all the commits to this, this EHR, to each EHR, basically. Um, you can also manage the users that will use the EHR server. These are actually admins that will, you, you have scopes for the admins. You can have uh, system administrators like me right now, I am in the system as a system administrator. I, I can see everything I can, I can do, anything really. Or you can constrain that by account or by organization. And that is by assigning different roles, yeah. Um, the users, are created to be able to log, actually log in into this user interface, into this web console. Yeah. And we have a special type of user that, that is the plain user that is not allowed to log in 
uh, to the web console, but are allowed to use and, and authenticate um, in the REST API, actually. Yeah, so you can create users here to be, that will be able to use the REST API. Yeah, we have the roles in the system. Uh, these are the four different roles, depending on the scope. And then we have a small access control. This is a low level control over the uh, different functionalities of the HR server. Um, this is the URL that is associated with the functionality. And this is the role that is associated is enabled to access that functionality, basically. Yeah, this is low level configuration stuff. Um, then we have, any, any questions about this? No? No? Good. Um, then the contributions. <clears throat> this is the list of commits for all the EHRs that I have access to. So since I, I am a super admin, I have access to all the organizations, all the commits all the HRs. And you can see here the, nu the number of commits. Uh, I think this is for the last uh, 12 months. This could be configured, this could be improved. Like uh, I don't have, for example, here uh, a month navigation or, na or a year navigation to see previous years. Uh, and below you have all the commits yeah, in, in a paginated mode. Yeah, you can, you can just go back in history to see the commits to each EHR. Uh, so here is the ID of the commit. The second column is the ID of the EHR, uh, the time committed, the system that created that commit, and how many uh, documents were included, included in that commit. Yeah. So if I check one commit here, one contribution, I can see uh, all that information here and also the details about the documents that were included in this commit. Yeah, so it's the same information as you saw in the EHR commits. Yeah, it's the same information and you can here access the, the original document that was committed. You can see here uh, the style applied to the, to the XML. Uh, this is nonsense information. This is for testing. This is actually created by a load tester that I have. Uh, it's a system that creates a lot of EHRs, then do, uh, does a lot of commits to each EHR with a lot of different um, documents. Uh, and that was created for testing. But the, the, the data in, the, in each document is random. For example, the texts don't have any sense in, in any language or clinical sense, yeah. Uh, but are compliant in, uh, uh, in the structure, at the structural level with the OPT. Um, so this is, for example, this is the adverse reaction uh, document in this case. Um, so this is uh, about contributions. Then you can see individual versions. This is the each individual clinical document that is committed to each EHR. So you can see all of them here. You have the ID of the specific, um, this is um, version composition. Uh, the EHR that version belongs to, uh, you can see if that version is persistent. In OpenEHR, you have two categories for the clinical documents. One is persistent and the other one is event. The event is something that happens, like a consultation, uh, and Persistent is something that is persistent in your record, like a diagnosis for a chronic disease, for example, or the list of medications that you are taking. Yeah. Uh, you can see here the time that document was created, the template that the document complies with, and the root archetype that that document complies with. Uh, all, of, all of these, the latest, one, uh, the latest ones are demographic data, so it just contain uh, date of birth and sex. Uh, you can go back in history to see if you have other types of documents. I have a lot of commits. What I did with the demographic data is I, I committed one uh, document with demographic data for each EHR. So I can do queries based on the age of the patient or on the sex of the patient, biological sex. So let me see if we have other types of documents here. I need to go back in history a little bit. Uh, let's cheat a little bit. Okay. 
So here we have um, some documents with a coded diagnosis. So I will check the document. And the document has the information about um, the, the ID of the version object and all the versions inside that uh, version object. The version of, uh, composition is just a container for many versions. Uh, in general, you have the first one will be the first version of that document that, uh, that will have change type creation. So that, that is the first document that you create. And then you can have many versions. And you, you will see this document doesn't have um, more than one version. But if it has more than one version, if it, it was fixed or completed after it was created, you will see here other box that says, for example, change type modification or change type amendment. You can also delete documents, so the, ch the change type will be deleted here. Yeah, and it's the same functionality. You can see the canonical XML, the clinical document, and you can see here a uh, more human-friendly uh, expression of that document. Um, the folder templates. Now we are at about uh, half time of the first hour of recordings. So you might want to shift closer to how to create things on top of this or do querying and those things. Yep, I will show you that in a five minutes, something like that. Um, the folder templates is an uh, in development feature. The idea is uh, the, the HR server already has. Uh, documents uh, uh, complies with the sorry the folders uh, complies with the folder specification, but uh, it is not so usable. I, I would say uh, right now, and even if in the open HR uh, REST API, it's very difficult to use folders because you actually need to provide the whole folder structure at once to create or modify a folder structure. So the idea in the EHR server was to simplify that and to create, for example, if you want um, in one organization, in one hospital, the, a standard structure for the folders inside all the EHRs that you create, you can here, you can create um, a, a small folder structure. And when, when a new EHR is created in that organization, that organization will have, uh, that um, EHR will have inside that uh, folder template already created. Yeah, and after that, you can put actually uh, documents inside those folders. Yeah, it's just an organizational thing, but this is an ongoing um, feature, and it's something I don't I don't know if other implementations have really. Um, then the queries. This is the most important part, and it's the most complex part in the EHR server. So here we have a list of queries that are already built in the EHR server. I will show you how to build a query and how to execute a query. Um, one thing that we can do here is basically you have um, groups for the queries. So uh, if you have three, four queries, uh, you don't need to organize them. But if you have, I don't know, a thousand queries, you need some kind of organization. So um, I created a kind of a structure to create groups with names and you can put queries on those groups. It's just an organizational thing. And on the list of queries, you will see those groups and the queries inside each group, yeah? Um, so we have queries for diagnosis, queries related to medication, queries related to demographic data. For example, here I have qu one query that um, is getting the documents that contain um, the, the demographic information is the patient is a male patient or the patient is female patient or the, the patient age goes from 27 to 59, yeah? So we can create those queries. And when we have that, here I can actually execute all the queries in that group to get an indicator, basically the amount of patients, EHRs, that actually have at least one document that complies with that query. So I can use really the queries to as, a, as filters, yeah? So we can execute this, it will go, go through all the EHRs in the EHR server. We will we'll execute each query against each EHR and will provide the results. It takes some time to provide the results. Yeah, it depends on the complexity of the query, really, and the number, of course, of EHRs that you have in the system and the number of documents. Yeah, on, on this case, we have 
almost half and half patients, female and male. And we have about uh, 800, above 60 uh, years old. This is a pretty basic indicator based on queries. Yeah. But you can say, for example, um, the number of patients that have a, 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 an, a prescription for medications that contain oxymetazoline, for example. And I have almost 400 here. So it's a, it's a pretty basic but useful uh, indicator. Yeah. Because, for example, if you check for, I don't know, diagnosis, and if you check for filters that have uh, chronic diseases, you know that the patient will have that chronic disease because it's chronic. Yeah? So the first um, query here is, uh, is getting all the patients that have uh, a chronic renal disease, uh, diabetes of any type, or a respiratory infection caused by a virus. Yeah? Almost 400 here. And I can show you how this is done because respiratory infection caused by a virus, you don't have actually a code to express that specific uh, disease, yeah? So what we have is we have SNOMED CT expressions for that, yeah? So this is the details of one query, and here it is showing all the criteria in that query, and if you can check this, it says, uh, check documents that contain this archetype, this is the evaluation problem diagnosis, um, on this path, this, this path corresponds to the specific, uh, specific problem diagnosis that is a coded text, yeah? And this is the criteria. So if I have a coded text here, this is saying the code in that coded text should be in this SNOMED expression. This uh, operator here is um, exclusive to the EHR server queries, yeah? Uh, I don't know of, and I don't, don't think it exists currently, uh, an OpenHR implementation that uh, can use SNOMED expressions integrated with OpenHR queries. Yeah, so this is a, a big differentiator, and is why we don't implement also AQL because AQL doesn't allow to do this uh, currently. Yeah, uh, so this is an expression. All of this, if you, I, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the concept ID for um, respiratory infection, this first code, yeah? And then it says the cause of that uh, respiratory infection should be this other concept. This is a virus, yeah? So this is respiratory infection caused by a virus. So here I don't need to, to express all the different codes for all the different uh, uh, respiratory infections. It's just the definition of, of uh, in this expression that will expand to all the possible codes, yeah. And the terminology ID on that code text is so it should be a SNOMED city, yeah. So that is basically um, a, a query in our system, and this is the representation of the query in uh, JSON. We use this format for uh, exchanging information, yeah, and. Let me show you how this query is built and I will show you how to create a query from scratch, a couple of queries from scratch. So each query has a name. The name could be translated to many languages because we have multilingual users on this system. Um, we have also two types of queries. I will show you that in a second. We can assign this query to a query group so it will be organized. And then the query builder, basically what you do is point and click. Yeah. So you can, um, select the templates that are loaded in the EHR server and are compliant with the current language because I'm here in the EHR server, I'm in English, so I can see here uh, only the English operational templates. Yeah. Uh, so when you click in one template, for example, medication prescription, you will see here the structure inside that template. And this is basically the uh, structure defined by the archetypes inside the template. Yeah, you can see here the main archetype is a composition, then inside that archetype is a section, and inside that section is an instruction. Yeah, if I click on the instruction uh, archetype, 
ID, I will see the internal structure of the archetype. So this is the definition of the data structure, basically. And I can see, for example, we have two alternatives for the medicine value, that is an element there. An element in OpenHR is basically a, a data field that has a, a type of data assigned to it. In this case, we have alternative types. It could be coded, it could be uh, free text. Yeah, And when you click on one of these nodes, you can see here the criteria builder for that specific type. So for the text, you can um, say that it contains a text like, and you can see here like, and you can express here like this text, or uh, it will um, uh, select the text that, that are contained in the, in the note text, or you can say, uh, no, this should be exactly equal to this and that text, and you can put this here, your value. But this does, doesn't have much value, but the code text search or filter um, is better because you can define, for example, the code should be equals to blah, blah, blah. And the terminology ID should be equals to, for example, uh, low ink, yeah. But here we have different operators. You can say the code should be in this list. So you, instead of having one code, you have a list of codes. And when you enter the code and present it, you will see a new, a new uh, field to enter the reference value. So this, will, this is basically select all the documents that contain a medication order and the medicine coded value should be in this list. Yeah, basically it's, it's that. And also you can say here in SNOMED expression and instead of just listing all the codes, you can come here and you can say, for example, uh, I don't have XNOMED expressions, but we, ha we use this tool, the SN query is the tool that is um, actually implemented in the EHR server. It's really the API provided by this tool. And here, we have some examples, for example, here. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any examples that contain um, medication substance, like okay, here. Uh, here we have one is related with uh, substances. So maybe this is not correct but, uh, in, in this context, but let's I, what I can do is I copy paste the, the expression. In the future, the ideal will be to have an editor for this kind of expressions, but it's not in the scope of the EHR server. And when I click this and this is painted in green, means that this uh, expression is valid. So I can use it as a query um, criteria. Yeah, and, I, and if you click on add criteria, it, it will add another condition to this query. Yeah, so I will do that just to show you. Here we have two different criteria. One is the first one that already was created in this query, that is um, respiratory infection caused by a virus. Yeah, and here what I can say is, since I have two different criteria here, and to create um, a valid uh, Boolean criteria, I need to join this using and or or. So I can say the the I need clinical documents that comply with both criteria. So I can say, and there, and there, that is how you create a complex query. Yeah. The result of this query will be a set of documents. Yeah. Um, so you can also remove that and remove. And so you can create a, a condition that could be as complex as you need. Yeah. Um, then we have, for example, in each query also the default format uh, for the output. It could be JSON or XML. Uh, since this query kind of query returns full clinical documents, you can say to actually return the full data of the clinical document that matches with this, this query, or you can say, no, don't provide the, the full document, just provide an index. So the index basically contains the ID of the document, the ID of the organization that this document belongs to, the ID of the EHR that this document belongs to, the template ID and uh, the time and date this document was, the, the document was created, and the root archetype ID. Basically it's a list of those, uh, those 
those uh, data points. So if I, I, what we have is, this is the query builder, but also it's a tester. So I can actually test against the current EHRs that exist on the EHR server, or I can say, no, let's try this query over just one EHR to see if this EHR contains any document that has um, a diagnosis is a respiratory infection caused by virus, basically. So I can execute the query here for this EHR and uh, I should get a result. This doesn't have any. So we will see data here. So this don't have any, um, any documents associated with respiratory infection. Maybe if I show you the diabetes one, maybe with this, we will have more matches. So let's try this one. So I will go directly to the tests. I will try to select an EHR there to see if this EHR contains a document uh, that contains a diagnosis of any type of diabetes. And this is the result. The result is um, a JSON structure that, that actually the first parameter or the first key here is the EHR ID. Yeah? And inside contains a list of indexes of clinical documents. And the index just contains, as I said before, the ID of the document, the category, the document creation, the subject ID, EHR ID, template, archetype IDs, organization ID, um, and the ID of the version that this document belongs to. So with this data, you can actually uh, call another endpoint in the REST API to get the document contents. Yeah? Or, or if you mark this as a yes, you will get the document contents here. Yeah, so in the test structure. So here I have the, um, the, the results are shown as a table and I can see here, for example, the contents of that document. And you can see the diagnosis is the diabetes, uh, secondary diabetes says this one. Yeah, so that is one type of diabetes that complies with that uh, SNOMED expression. And if I go to XML document, I can actually go to the, to, to choose severity. This is the node for the coded um, problem. And you can see here, this is one of the codes in SNOMED that complies with the diabetes tree. Yeah. So basically, when you create a query, you can execute that query using uh, the REST API. Yeah. And that is what you integrate into the uh, front end applications. Yeah. I will show you another type of query, just quick. It will take one second. I will create one query from scratch and this one will get some data back, yeah? So there are two types of, of queries. Composition returns clinical documents that comply with some uh, criteria and data value returns a set of data value that you select from a template, from an archetype. So for example, uh let's see here i have simple weight con weight control so here i have a template that contains the body weight the height of the person and the body mass index so i can select the weight and here i have the weight node that is a tv quantity and i will add that to my query so if i go to here I will say the default format for this query is for the result is JSON and I have different kinds of groups how to group the results together. Grouping by path will group all the results for the path of the weight value into one object. Yeah that is the one that I want um, and I will select one EHR here and execute there. And here I have the results. Uh, we have the EHR ID here. Then we have the node um, definition. This is what I selected to get from the EHR is the weight. So I have here the um, archetype ID and the path to the specific weight node. Yeah. And here I have the name of that 
a node in different languages. It depends on the OPTs that you have loaded in the system in different languages. And here you have a series of three values inside this EHR. Many, maybe other EHRs have more values for their weight. Yeah? And here you can see, the because this is a dB quantity, you can see the magnitudes, the units, the, and also the, the date that was created. This is the creation date of the document that contains that specific node. Yeah? And then we have an absolute path in the uh, template to reach that specific node. Basically, this is a time series. So you can do stuff like this very simple. Yeah, so this is just charting the results. So this is, since this is not for final users, this is just for administrators to check if the queries they are creating are correct just by looking at the data. If the data makes sense, the query will be correct. Yeah, and let me show you how this works. A, a second thing before I show you the, um, the REST API, how that is integrated into applications, I will show you the combined queries. The idea of this is you take some of the queries created before, the simple queries, it could be a query for an age range or a sex or if the patient has diabetes. And here you can combine all the criteria together. Yeah. So for example, here I have a query, a combined query that is composed by four different individual queries. The patient is masculine, the patient is between this age range, the patient has obesity of wor or worse that is compared with to the body mass index and has diabetes, any type of diabetes is the query that I showed you before. And here I can execute this and will select all the EHRs that contains document, documents that actually at least one complies with each one of these criteria. So basically what we are selecting here is EHRs of people that is, are masculine, are between this age range, have obesity of worse and diabetes. So this could be a risk assessment. And this is built in the, it's a specific feature of the HR server. They're, they're actually combine, combining a simple queries. This is not uh, OpenHR specification, it's a specific feature. And with this, you can, for example, select patients for clinical trials, because you can select patients here that have some, for example, some kind of cancer, but, or, or, or heart failure uh, risk. If they are obese, they have, um, they have high cholesterol and maybe they have high blood pressure. Yeah, that is a risk, um, uh, are risk um, factors that combined could lead to a cardiac problem. So here you can actually select those patients and you can actually call those patients and invite them to uh, uh, participating in a program, for example, focus on that specific combination of risk factors. Yeah, so that is a very specific feature of the EHR server. And then you have the OPT management uh, screen. Basically here you can upload OPTs, you can see the OPT details for each uh, operational template that you upload. You can see the structure. Uh, we have um, also versioning internal, internally of the application. We have um, versioning for revisions of OPTs. So you can upload updates of your OPTs. And also here you can see the actual internal structure of if each OPT in a visual way. So you can, for example, simple way control, you can see it contains a composition, then contains three observations and you can navigate this. So the first observation is body weight and you can, inside the body weight, you can go down to the uh, event, uh, it's entry. So all the data is defined here. You have a, an element there and this is the weight and you can see the path of the weight uh, of inside the archetype and you can see the path of the weight inside the template from the root of the template. So this is useful for testing also. This is the prototype one, but this will be integrated soon. So let me show you. This is the development version in my machine, actually. Um, so what you have is, uh, the, this is for emergency departments in hospitals. What you have here is a list of patients that are currently in the emergency room. You mm -hmm. can see um, uh, information, the name, uh, the sex, uh, age, the, age uh, the reason for encounter, uh, if you have triage, the, the triage evaluation, 
the current physical location of the patient, yeah, and the time that they spent in the emergency since they were admitted. And then we have uh, uh, orders that were created or um, fulfilled for that patient. And we have a code for the orders. For example, if you go here, if I change this to done, and I can say this was done, blah, 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 and it will be associated with me as a user, you will see this has a border now. So uh -huh. we have a, a little graphic um, representation of orders, and if that is pending, if it's active or it is done. Uh, so this is useful for to avoid um, forgetting to do things on the patient. And we have a list of, this is in Spanish, we are also um, translating this at, the, at this moment. So for example, hemogram, you ask for a hemogram, blah, 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 and that you can see here and you can see here also. And if it, so if it doesn't have a border, it is pending. If it has active, for example, there. So the color is different things to do and the border. Yeah, the, the orange is a laboratory orders. The green are imaginology orders. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, fluids, for example, blood. Um, no, fluids is uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. um, here, I think, yeah. This other color and if we have for example, um, red cells, for example. I want to apply red cells, it's another color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so this is useful to avoid forgetting things. And if you, at a glance, you can see all the patients and what they have uh, to do and what is active and what has been done. Uh, then we have summary of the patient. This should be integrated with the EHR in the hospital. Right now, we, don't, we are not integrated with anything. So he, this is hard-coded data, all but the reason for encounter and the triage. Yeah, the rest is hard-coded, but the idea is to take the personal information from a, a master patient index and to get some uh, history, uh, maybe diagnosis or relevant information from the EHR. Then you can move the patients uh, physically so if you have, for example, this is waiting room, uh, you have some triage rooms, some boxes, some surgery, um, this is theater, and observation uh, seats. You can see uh, observation beds in the emergency. This could be configured per emergency because it depends on the services that you have and the physical location, really. Uh, you can move the patients here just by clicking on another you know, place. Uh, and then you can, if you click on one, you can see actually the history of movements of that patient and the time of those movements. We, uh, and for the orders, we do a similar thing. If you click on one order, you can see the details of the order and also the status change for that order and who did the change. And this counts when the change was done. For example, this was done two minutes ago. Uh, we try to mark, you know, the timing uh, because it is emergency and, and timing is crucial here. Uh, then laboratory results and imaging results also need to be integrated with the hospital information system to get the results here. And the idea is to get the types of results and then you have here uh, like a, a, a flag to say, ah, all the results were okay. Or some results are not okay, that is yellow or orange, and all the results are just not okay, red, yeah. So, and the, the idea is to get these tables also from the EHR. Imagine results the same, you get these results from the EHR or from the PACS, really. I, I have experience uh, integrating with DICOM and HL7 version two with PACS. So this is very easy to do, really. And here we have just a mock of what it could be. So for example, here you can see the images. And if you click, you can see the uh, viewer, this is a, hard-coded viewer with some hard-coded images, but this could be done uh, with real images and we are, with a real box, very simple. I have another application that's that, just that. Uh, and then the episode is the clinical record, basically from start to end. Uh, you can do the triage, evolution, you have the is this ABCD. Where, is this where you use OpenHR? The idea is in, in OpenHR, what we will map is the, the orders, uh, and, the, and the change of state of the orders that will be done by actions, uh, the movements 
that will be an admin entry. Uh, and the episode will be forms, uh, just compositions with archetypes inside. Uh, this, for, for example, is pretty easy. It's just one archetype for the triage. And we, I already have the archetypes that will be used to define the OPT behind this, but we don't have the OPTs yet. I'm, I'm working on that area right now. So, so this is not using OpenAir yet, but you want to map it into? So, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the first idea or the first goal was actually to um, make this work in the way I liked and, and I designed it. Uh, so we worked with um, an Argentinian doctor on this application uh, for the last six months, last year. And now it's, it's working. We are just fixing some UI stuff uh, to be able to make good presentations and some marketing materials. And after that, I will go back to the code and I will do the integration with the HR server. So the idea is when you fill in a, a document that will be committed as a, as a composition to the HR server. Really. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, we have a group of students doing a similar thing right now in Sweden. So is it okay if I show them this part of the demo and then... Yeah, and we have a, a couple of videos online in... in um, here in, in YouTube. Uh, I can point you to the, to the videos later, but mm -hmm. are all here. Also, the EHR server videos are here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a video in English yet, but I can, I, I yes, need to do a, a demo in English. 